Let us now address the question how to compute arbitrage-free prices for European contingent claims in the um, Cox-Ross-Rubinstein model. So let me remind you first what was the European contingent claim. So this was nothing else but an FT measurable random variable which should have the property that C is non-negative. So the advantage now of the uh, factorization lemma is the following. We know that we can represent any ft measurable random variable in terms of a PC almost truly uniquely determined function, little c, which maps r to the capital T plus 1 to the non-negative reals. And this function C is chosen in such a way that the discounted European contingent claim, which is nothing else but the European contingent claim divided by this deterministic uh, factor 1 plus r to the capital T, can be written in terms of this function little c of the random variables S1 naught up to S1 capital T. And it will turn out that this representation is quite useful in order to derive explicit formulas for the arbitrage-free price of the European contingent claim. So why is that the case? Well, that's a statement of the following theorem. For that, I consider an arbitrage-free Cox-Ross-Rubinstein model, which I would like to denote by S1 again, and I would like to consider a European contingent claim C. And then the discounted value process for any replicating trading strategy, denoted here by V h bar of t, is nothing else but the expected value under Q of the discounted European contingent claim given ft for any t in the index set and any q in the equivalent martingale and the set of equivalent martingale measures. And the, the statement here is the following that this uh, random variable v h bar t can be written as a function little v of uh, depending on the parameter t of the random variables s1 naught up to s1 little t and this function v t which simply maps the, um, the set 0 infinity to the uh, power t plus 1 to the non-negative reals and is explicitly given by the following formula vt of uh, y naught up to yt is nothing else but the expected value under q of the function c where we now plug in the, the parameters y naught up to yt and from the component t plus 1 on we plug in yt times the factor 1 plus r1 up to yt times the factor which is given in terms of a product s from 1 up to capital t minus t of this uh, terms 1 plus rs and with respect to the random variables r1 up to r uh, capital t minus t we take the expected value over here so why is that theorem true and why it is useful so let us first see why it is true. So by the corollary 3.2, we have seen that any arbitrage-free Cox-Ross-Rubinstein model is complete, meaning that every European contingent claim is attainable. That's, that's nothing else but there exists a replicating strategy. Moreover, by theorem 2.12, we know that for any Q in the set of equivalent Martingale measures, which in this particular situation consists only of one element, and any replicating strategy, um, the discounted value process VH bar is given in terms of the conditional expectation of the discounted European contingent claim given the sigma algebra FT. But this we can now explicitly express in terms of the function little c which we introduced namely that's nothing else but the conditional expectation under q of the function c of x1 naught up to x1 t 
Um, and from the component t plus 1 on, we multiply and divide by s1t. So meaning this component, the t plus 1 component is s1t divided by the, multiplied by the ratio s1t plus 1 divided by s1t up to s1t times the ratio of s1 capital T uh, divided by s1 little t. So what do we know? So first of all, we know that the random variables s1 naught up to s1t are ft measurable. On the other hand, we also know that this ratio s1t plus k divided by s1t, which is nothing else but the product n from t plus 1 up to t plus k of this factors 1 plus rn, are independent of the sigma algebra ft, which is simply generated by the random variables r1 up to rt. And the reason for that is that this product starts from t plus 1 on. Hence, uh, we have here, so the first components are measurable. These random variables over here are independent. And moreover, we also know that this function c of this value s1 naught up to s1t, which is nothing else but the discounted claim, is also in L1q by the theorem 1.12. Hence, we can apply now the theorem 1.16, which tells us that we can explicitly compute that uh, condition expectation. Namely, it's given in terms of the expected value of the function c of y0 up to yt. And then the next components are given in terms of yt times 1 plus rt plus 1 up to yt times this product s from t plus 1 up to capital T of these factors 1 plus rs, where we afterwards plug in for y0 the value s1 naught up to yt replacing by s1t. So we first compute the expected value with respect to this return variables and then we plug in these random variables. But since the um, random variables R1 up to R capital T are IID under Q, um, and in particular due to the identical distribution, we can also rewrite that expected value in the following way. Namely, it's the expected value under Q of the function C of Y0 up to Yt, comma, yt times 1 plus r1, so we shift here by t, and we also do that for any uh, term appearing in that uh, in these arguments, and we end up by the product s from 1 to capital T minus t of the factor 1 plus rs. And then we plug in uh, for y0 up to yt the values s1 0 up to s1t. And that's nothing else but the definition of our function uh, vt, where we plug in simply here the random variables s1, 0 up to s1, t. And that concludes the proof of this theorem. So now we should discuss why is that representation useful. And let us have a look at, a, at an example. So here I consider an arbitrage-free cox ross rubinstein model and I assume that the European Union contingent claim C only depends on the terminal value of this price process S1t, meaning that there exists a function C from the non-negative reals into the non-negative reals, such that I can write the discounted value pro and the discounted European Union con contingent claim as a function little c of S1 capital T. And in a moment, you will see examples of that type. So by the previous uh, theorem, we know that the discounted value process at time point t is nothing else but this function vt of s1t. But this function vt is explicitly given, namely, in terms of the expected value of this function c of y times this product s from 1 to capital T minus T of these factors 1 plus rs. But now we can compute that expected value explicitly. Why is that the case? Well, so in that product, we can simply count how often does 
um, factors appear where rs is equal to u and how often does a factor appear where rs is equal to d. And then we end up by the following, namely the sum k from 0 up to capital T minus t. So this binomial factor tells us how many possibilities to have uh, we have to choose out of capital T minus T values exactly K factors which are equal to U and capital T minus T minus K factors which are equal to D. And that's the probability. Namely U to the K because we sample under this unique equivalent Martingale measure times 1 minus q to the power capital T minus T minus k. And here we used that uh, this equivalent Martingale measure has a property that under q the random variables r1 up to rt are iid um, with uh, success probability q. And then this function c is simply given, or this evaluation here is given as c of y times 1 plus u to the power k times 1 plus d to the power capital T minus t minus k. And uh, since q is an equivalent Martingale measure, which is unique, we also know that q is given by that formula, namely the ratio of r minus d divided by r minus u, which is strictly uh, chosen from the open interval uh, 0, 1. And in particular, now we can compute the arbitrage free price of this particular European contingent claim. Namely, it's nothing else but the value y naught of s1 naught. So s1 naught we know. And this function y naught we also know by that formula. Namely, it's nothing else but the sum k from 0 up to capital T of this binomial factor t choose, two, uh, t choose k times q to the k times 1 minus q to the capital T minus k. And then we have here the evaluation of the function c of s1 naught times 1 plus u to the k times 1 plus d to the capital T minus k. So we have here an explicit formula for the price of that particular European contingent claim. So let us have a closer look what kind of European contingent claims have that property over here. And these properties are immediately satisfied by the European call and put option with the maturity capital T and strike price K. So let me remind for you, the European call option was nothing else but S1 capital T minus K, the positive part. And the put option was the difference between K and S1 capital T and then I take the positive part of that. And you see in that particular situation, the discounted um, European call option is given as that function um, y minus k positive part divided by 1 plus r to the capital T, where I plug in for y the value s1 capital T. So we know explicitly our function a little c. Likewise, we also know the function little c for the put option, which I denote here by little c put, and in that case by little c call. So now we can use the formula we just derived to compute the price of a European call option. Namely, that's nothing else but that sum t from 0 up to capital T of this binomial factor, t choose little t of q to the t, times 1 minus q to the capital T minus t. And then we just have to evaluate um, y, uh, s1 naught times the following product, namely 1 plus q divided by 1 plus r to the power t, times 1 plus d divided by 1 plus r to the power capital T minus t. So that's a little bit complicated way to rewrite that factor 1 plus r to the capital T. I split that into the factor 1 plus r to the t and 1 plus r to the capital T minus t. And here I subtract a k divided by 1 plus r to the capital T. So now I would like to evaluate or simplify that formula a little bit. And since that positive part only 
gives me a value when z term over here is larger than z term. Let me define this index of this value a k, which is nothing else but the smallest value t such that s10 times 1 plus u to the t times 1 plus d to the capital T minus t is larger than capital K, larger than the strike price. And you see that's just that term in the numerator. And by doing so, we see, then we get simply here a difference. If we sum simply from t from a k on, whereas the terms from 0 up to a k minus 1 are equal to 0, and then I can take out that term and I can combine that factor with this q over here and that, that factor with a minus, minus q over here. And then you see the price of a European uh, call option is simply given as a difference of the distribution function of two binomial distributed random variables. Namely, I get here s1 naught times the binomial distribution with the parameter q times 1 plus u over 1 plus r comma t of the set rk up to capital T minus this ratio capital K divided by 1 plus r to the t times the binomial distribution now under the original parameter of the equivalent martingale measure q comma t of the set ak up to capital T. And likewise, I get an expression for the European, so the price of a European put option. So again, that's nothing else but the sum t from 0 up to capital T of this binomial factor times q to the t times 1 minus q to the capital T minus t of the positive part of the difference between the discounted strike price and the discounted um, value of our um, uh, uh, price of the risky security at maturity, which is nothing else but S10 times 1 plus u to the t divided by 1 plus r to the t multiplied by the factor 1 plus d to the capital T minus t divided by 1 plus r to the capital T minus t. And again now, you see that difference is zero whenever t is larger or equal to a k, meaning only the term, the sums t equal to zero up to a k minus one um, are relevant. And in that particular situation, I get the difference between the binomial distribution of this parameter q and t of the set zero up to a k minus one multiplied by that a prefactor capital K times one plus r to the capital T minus the initial value s one naught times binomial distribution now with this shifted parameter namely q times one plus u over one plus r comma t of the set zero up to a k minus one so we have seen in that particular situation that this formula we have seen in theorem uh, 3.2 uh, was rather useful and so now let us uh, see a corollary from that, that also in the situation when this European call option not only depends on the terminal value, but it's rather general, we can compute recursively the um, values of these functions Vt. And that's the statement of the following corollary. For that, I consider again an arbitrary cox ross rubinstein model and a European contingent claim. And then the statement is the following. The uh, functions Vt, which, which we defined in theorem 3.2, can be computed recursively. Namely, uh, in, a, in a backward recursion, meaning the terminal value V capital T of that, uh, with the input values or with the arguments y not up to y capital T is simply this function C. And the function y um, little t, so here's the typo, this should be little t, of the values y not up to y t is given in terms of q times the value y t plus 1 
where we plugged in here the values y0 up to yt. And in the last value, I put here the value yt times 1 plus u plus 1 minus q. And in the last value, I plug this time the value yt times 1 plus d. And this holds true for any t between 0 and capital T minus 1. Meaning, if in case you would like to compute explicitly these functions um, uh, y t for t from 0 to capital T, you have to go backwards. So you first compute, or the, you start from that function c, and then you compute the function for capital T minus 1 by that formula, and then you go on up to end up until the point you end up with y0. And once you have y0, you also have the price of the European contingent claim. So that's the recipe how to compute them. So why is that true? And this simply follows from the tower property of conditional expectations. So for any t in that interval 0, 1 up to capital T minus 1, uh, let us compute, so let us use the definition. So yt of s1 naught up to s1t is nothing else by definition as the conditional expectation under q of this discounted com uh, contingent claim given ft. But by the power pro uh, tower property, I can also write that conditional expectation as a conditional expectation given ft of the conditional expectation of the you discount European contingent claim given f t plus 1. So now let us plug in here the definition which tells us uh, we have here the value y t plus 1 of s1 naught up to s1 t comma s1 t um, of this random variable 1 plus r t plus 1 given f t. But now again these random variables over here are measurable with respect to ft, whereas this random variable over here is independent of ft. Hence, by theorem 1.16, that expression over here is nothing else but the expected value under q of this uh, function v t plus 1, where we plug in the, the parameters y0 up to yt, and in the last argument we plug in yt times 1 plus r1, and the y0 up to yt are given in terms of s1 naught up to s1t. So now we can compute that expected value, namely that's simply q in, in case that r1 is equal to u, or uh, q minus 1 in case that r1 is equal to d. So hence, we get the following recursive formula that we expressed yt in terms of yt plus 1 um, as desired. And that concludes the proof. So the next question is, since we have now seen that we can explicitly compute the discounted value process, can we also say something about the uh, replicating trading strategy in that particular situation? And the answer is yes, and that's given by the following theorem. So for that, again, I consider an arbitrage-free Cox-Ross-Rubinstein model, um, which I denote by S bar, and I consider a European contingent claim. And then the statement is the following, that the hedging strategy, so the replicating strategy for C, is given by the following formula. So first of all, y1 naught is equal to y11 by definition. And uh, y1t is given in terms of delta t of s1 naught up to s1 t minus 1 for any t in this interval 1 up to capital T, whereas this function delta of t is defined in the following way. So this is nothing else but delta t of y0 up to yt minus 1, so and this is equal to 1 plus r to the t times this function vt, which comes from the theorem 3.2, of um, y0 up to yt minus 1, comma yt minus 1 plus, uh, times the value 1 plus u minus 
vt of the value y0 up to yt minus 1 comma yt times the value 1 plus d divided by uh, yt minus 1 times the difference between u minus and d. So meaning once we know this um, values or these functions vt, we can also write down explicitly what should be this function delta t. So and here's a remark. So this random variable uh, delta t, when we plug in the random variables s1 not up to s1 and t minus 1, and can be seen as a kind of discrete derivative of the discounted value functions, which we defined in the theorem 3.2. And this gives, tells you something about the effect of the changes of the discounted value process with respect to the changes of the underlying price process, modulo discounting. So, and in financial language, a hedging strategy based on the derivative of the discounted value process is also called a delta hedging. So, let us have a look at um, the proof of that theorem. So, first of all, by lemma 2.2c, we know that for any replicating strategy, we can write down a formula of the increments of the discounted uh, value process, namely vh bar of t minus vh bar of t minus 1 is nothing else but vh bar of naught plus the gain process at time point t minus um, the initial value of our discounted value process plus the gain process at time point t minus 1. So here's a typo. So as you see, these initial values cancel out and what, is le what are left is simply the increments of our um, discounted uh, gain process. But this was nothing else but uh, a discrete stochastic integral, meaning only one summand is left, namely the, the value h1t times x1t minus x1t minus 1. So on the other hand, we also know that the discounted value process is given in terms of this function vt uh, of this uh, random variables s1 0 up to s1t, which we can also write as uh, vt of the random variables s1 0 up to s1t minus 1. And the last component we plug in s1t minus 1 comma 1 plus rt. So now we see um, that this function as a function of rt can only take two values, namely the value um, 1 plus u in that component, and I can denote by v h by u exactly the corresponding value of this va discounted value function, or it can take the value um, h bar comma d, where we plug in here in the last component this product s1 t minus 1 times 1 plus d. And likewise, we can also rewrite the um, discounted price process at time t. It only can change us with respect to the discounted value process at time t minus 1 uh, by two values, namely either the value 1 plus u divided by 1 plus r or 1 plus d divided by 1 plus r, depending on whether the random variable rt takes the value u or d. So now we have here four random variables which are f t minus 1 measurable. And by that formula over here, we get two assistance of two equations, namely the following one, h bar of t can um, be uh, h bar of t minus 1 can be written as h bar of comma u t plus h1 t times x1 comma u t minus x1 t minus 1 which is nothing else but as uh, the discounted value process uh, where this random variable rt takes a value u plus and here i computed simply what is that difference over here and likewise we get um, that 
vh bar of t minus 1 can be written as vh bar comma d. So in that situation, rt takes the value d times um, h1 t and the difference between h1 comma d t minus h1 t minus 1. And here I have explicitly written down what that is. And now you see when we take differences between these two equations, you see that term cancels out. Um, here this one cancels out, also this factor 1 divided by r, uh, 1 plus r cancels out. And what is left is simply, um, on the one hand, this h1 of uh, t. So and then I bring, uh, I get here the difference between these two terms. So here I have the zero, so I have brought that term on the other side. And what is left here, here you get u minus d times that factor. So and I divide it simply by that factor and I multiply it simply by this factor 1 plus r. And you see that definition over here is nothing else um, but this uh, function delta of t of this random variables s1 naught up to s1 t minus 1 provided that you replace x1 uh, uh, t minus 1 by uh, the, by the non-discounted price process. And then you get an additional factor 1 plus r to the t minus 1. Combining this factor with that factor gives you exactly this delta hedging strategy.